So it's election day here in the UK and I'm just about to go off and cast my vote. Here's the election form that we get here, the parliamentary elections and uh, what it says here, for those of you who are not in the UK and are curious, uh, when you go to the polling station tell the clerk your name and address as shown on the front of the card. Well actually you just hand the card over. But you don't have to take the card. Um, in that case you do tell them your name and address. Yeah. And when you are given your ballot paper, go to one of the polling booths, mark a cross in the box on the right hand side of the ballot paper opposite the name of the candidate you are voting for. Vote for one candidate only. Do not put any other mark on the ballot paper or your vote may not be counted. The thing that I find cu curious every time is um, why it has to be an X, um, a cross X, you know. You can't put a tick. I think so long as you mark very clearly who you're voting for, it really shouldn't matter. But that is the rules. It must be an X. If you put a tick, it's counted as invalid. So uh, anyway, I'm going to uh, pop along to the voting booth and uh, do my civic duty. And by tomorrow morning, we'll know pretty much what the outcome is. I haven't really commented on the election because uh try to avoid politics as much as I can. I have made the odd political video on here. But, um, yeah, the the thing I will say about this election campaign is the media coverage. Uh, they've tried to do an American-style presidential campaign. They've had these leadership debates here in the UK. Now, so far as I can see, those are pointless. They're focusing on the personalities of the leaders of the main three parties. Now, in a country that has a presidential election, say for example the USA, okay, you have the individuals there and you have them answering questions uh, and you know that you can vote directly for one of these candidates and that one of them will be the winner at the end of the election. One of them will be the president. But, in the UK, that's not the case. You have the three main party leaders, as David Cameron, Nick Clegg and Gordon Brown. They are standing as individual candidates in their own constituency. Personally, I can't vote for either of them. I have my own candidates that I vote for. And it's possible, it's probably unlikely, but it's possible that neither David Cameron, Nick Clegg or Gordon Brown will win their individual seat they may not be MPs by the end of the election. So all this concentration on the personality of these three individuals could be an absolute total waste of time because in the UK we are not electing a head of state, we are electing a party to form a government and these three guys ha happen to be, at the moment, the leaders of those parties. And they may not be the leaders of those parties come tomorrow. So what we should have been looking at, what the media should be focusing on, I know they have their own agenda, right across the world the media make up their own minds and they try to manipulate events and, and you know, manipulate the way people think according to what they report. Um, and they basically sh should have been looking at the policies of the parties to help the people decide which party they should be voting for. But um, instead, we've got this big personality clash of three guys who by tomorrow could be out of a job because we might not have any of them. So, um, totally pointless. I suppose it raised the viewing figures. It made it a kind of a circus on TV. But uh, today is the real day for casting a vote. So this little card here that came through the door ages ago is going to um, accompany me down the road. And uh, so if you're voting in the UK today, I hope that you get the result you want. Unless, of course, it's not the result that I want, in which case I don't. Have a great day.